On this baptism of the Lord Sunday, I bid you peace, joy, and love. Welcome to this virtual worship service for Church of the Master Presbyterian Church USA. We are delighted that you've chosen to worship with us today. Come with us now as we go forth in intentional worship of our triune God. Greetings, Church of the Master family. Please join me for our call to worship. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of God's holy name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. With thanksgiving and joy, let us worship God. God, we come to you always. Oh, wow, it's just reverence. Thank you for the new recording your calendar year. We thank you for bringing us through here with full of lessons, full of grace, full of forgiveness, full of that pump that makes us want to be better people, better agents of your will. We ask always that you forgive us of our sins, and especially those that we commit unknowingly. We ask that you continue to correct us and show us the way. Ask that you continue to bless our friends, bless our families. We ask that you continue to guide our steps as we take faith walk. Because sometimes we don't see you, but we know that you are there. And you've always been there. You have always been there. We pray all this in Jesus' magnificent name. Beloved, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, our God who is righteous and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us 
from all unrighteousness. So let us be bold now and confess our sins, for God is gracious and always ready to forgive. In penitence and faith, let us now confess our sins. God, you show no partiality, yet we are not always as tolerant and accepting. Forgive our intolerance and help us to see as you see that we may be found acceptable in your sight. In the name of your Son and our Savior, we pray. Amen. Amen. Beloved, hear the good news, and it is good news. Anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. The old life has gone, and a new life has begun. Friends, believe the gospel. I declare to you in the name of the risen one that you are, I am, we are forgiven. Now go and do likewise and be at peace. We turn now to the proclamation of the word portion of our worship service for this baptism of the Lord Sunday. After our prayer of illumination, our scripture readings for today will be as follows. The Old Testament text comes from the Psalter. It is Psalm 29 in its entirety. And the New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Pray with me, please. Still speaking, God, as these words from Scripture are read, may it be to us as if the heavens are opening and we see your spirit descending on us like a dove, revealing your love for us as your daughters and sons. Amen. 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 Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Surrey Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple say, all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Our New Testament reading will come from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 3, verses 13 through 17. Listen for the word of the Lord. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was open, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And the voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. The word of God for the people of God.
on this second Sunday of 2023, this baptism of the Lord Sunday, I bid you peace, joy, and love. The sermon for this Lord's Day finds its basis in the gospel lesson, which has already been read. Today, for just a little while, I want to talk about questions and baptism. Questions and baptism. Pray with me, please. Loving God, as we enter this preaching moment, we ask that you strip away inattention or fuzzy mindedness. Let our sole focus be on you and the word that you have for each of us. Caring God, kindly still our minds, remove our cares and concerns so that we might clearly hear your voice as it speaks to us. Now, God, for as much as without thee we're not able to please thee, mercifully grant that thy Holy Spirit may in all things that follow. Direct and rule our hearts through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Beloved, on this Sunday, when this gospel lesson encourages us to focus on the meaning of baptism, I would like us to also spend some time asking and pondering some meaningful questions about our baptism. Once a year, at the very beginning of the year, we have opportunity to look back while looking forward. We take stock of what we have done, what we have become, and then we dream dreams, we have visions, we set our goals and set our course as a way of becoming, growing into, maturing into our very best self. Indeed, our culture and traditions allow us this moment of retrospection and introspection as we cast a hopeful eye on the days to come. Yes, the opportunity in this moment in time is open to everyone, everyone, regardless of age or circumstance. And today, I would like to suggest that while you are looking back, while looking forward, that you remember your baptism and consider one, your growth as one who belongs to God, and two, your commitment to the covenant made between you and God in your baptismal waters. Now, if you were baptized as an infant, recall the story told to you of that special day. Surely family members and church members have spoken to you of that day when you made entry into the fold. Remember, remember. Then think of, recall your confirmation, that moment when you fully embraced all that was spoken over you and held in trust as the body of believers nurtured, protected, supported, and taught you. Remember. Now, if you were baptized as the age when you could sincerely declare your belief or as an adult, remember. Yes, remember what brought you to those baptismal waters. Spend some time recalling. Stay in the peace and the power of that moment. Then take stock of your journey to date. And ask yourselves, one, what does my baptism mean right now in this moment in time? And two, 
Does my baptism inform how I live my life each and every day? Beloved, baptism unites Christians in every place. But why is baptism so central, so foundational to what it means to be a Christian? Well, the answer to that is simple, really, and is found in our scripture for today. The answer, it is what Jesus did. It is what Jesus did, and it's what Jesus did to begin his journey. Now, when we look at that interesting exchange between John and Jesus that is only found in this Matthew text, that exchange where Jesus recognizes who, excuse me, that exchange where John recognizes who is to be baptized and simply responds that he is not worthy. He is not worthy of the honor. In this exchange, we see Jesus teaching us the greater meaning of our baptism. True, John sees baptism as we all do, as a call to repentance, as an opportunity for change, positive change, transformation, as an entryway into a new life, a new covenant with God. But, but, beloved, in this exchange, we see that Jesus knows and states that Baptism is just what John says it is, and it's much, much more. Hear these words again. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. It is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Yes, here Jesus is consenting to John, acknowledging that his baptism is not for repentance, like for you and for me, for indeed, Jesus was without sin. But he is also stating that his baptism, like our baptism, represents the beginning of the process, the beginning of the journey to fulfill all righteousness. Beloved, as we remember our baptism or our church family recalls it for us and places it into our memory, for each of us, we learn the meaning of our baptism after the fact. You see, none of us fully knew what we were doing. I said fully knew what we were doing on the day we were baptized. Years later, as we make our way slowly into the faith, years later, as we walk the path to fulfill righteousness, the purpose of our baptism begins to unfold, begins to unfold as we mature into the people that God created us to be. It begins to unfold as we take on our new identity as children of God, heirs, citizens, of God's kingdom now and God's kingdom to come. Beloved, our baptism places us on the path. It places us in relationship with God. It renews the covenant God made with us at our creation. Our baptism is our beginning. But my brothers and my sisters in Christ, Hear this now, hear it, and take it in. How we live out our relationship with God determines if we 
fulfill righteousness. Know this to be true. Baptisms, like most beginnings, find their meanings long after the event. Yes, church, beginning is often easy, while finishing is often hard. Don't you know that the significance of any decision takes a while to emerge? Indeed, moments of initiation are meaningless until we are true. Yes, true to the promise of that beginning. And it takes our whole lives, our whole lives, to finish the journey we begin. Hmm. Now, as we begin this new year, thinking about and asking questions about our baptism, we have to ask ourselves, what have we done to stay on the path to fulfill righteousness? What have we left undone? What will we do to stay the course, to stay on the path to fulfill righteousness? As we begin this year, thinking about our baptisms. Beloved, we have to ask ourselves, what are we doing in our everyday lives to uphold our end of the covenant we made with God in our baptismal waters? You see, God upholds God's end. But as we walk this path, this path to fulfill righteousness, we have to ask ourselves, are we true to our baptism? Are we true to our covenant? In closing on this baptism of the Lord Sunday, I challenge you to take this opportunity, this moment in time, take it to take stock to take an honest look at how you are living each day as one who belongs to God. Ask yourself, what does your daily walk look like? Do you take each day, do you take each day time to connect and communicate with God? Do you model Christ-like behavior? Can those new to the path, can those fresh from their baptismal waters look to you as a model, look to you for instruction? Hmm. And as a body of believers, the body of Christ. Church of the Master, we should take this opportunity to take stock and ask ourselves similar questions. Noted theologian Stanley Horowitz rightly stated that Christians are called to be a community capable of forming people with virtues significant to witness to God's truth in the world. Let me say that again. Christians are called to be a community capable of forming people with virtues sufficient to witness to God's truth in the world. Yes, as a body of baptized believers, as the body of Christ, our virtues should be sufficient to, wish, to witness to God's truth in the world. Yes, the virtues of hope, humility, courage, integrity, love, kindness, and compassion should form the character 
and the culture of this church. Question is, how are we doing as we journey together on this path? On this path as baptized believers? Hmm. Just some questions, beloved. Some questions that need our attention as we set our course on the path, on the path to fulfill righteousness in this brand new year. Pray with me, please. God of life and new life, you are splendid and strong. Your voice thunders above the sound of loud waters. You sit enthroned above the floods of life. As Jesus heard you speak to him in his baptism, we pray now that you might open our ears, our hearts, and our spirits, that we might hear you speaking to us, calling to us to stay true to the course, calling to us to stay on the path to fulfill righteousness. Merciful God, we pray that you will speak your truth to us as we ask ourselves, serious questions about how we live out our covenant relationship with you. Merciful God, speak to us as only you can. And we pray that through it all, we will hear you calling us, as calling us your beloved. In the name of the Creator, the Savior, and the Sustainer. Amen, amen, amen. Wash, O oh God, our sons and daughters, this way of cleansing. Christ, blessed Lord.
We turn now to the service of giving for this Lord's Day. Beloved, we are very grateful to you for the generosity that you have shown to the ministry here at Church of the Master. We ask that you continue with your generous stewardship in this year, 2023. Beloved, God gives us life from inception to new life, born of repentance, forgiveness, and resurrection. So with generous hearts for all that God has done, let us now give of our time, talent, and our treasure. Please give. Again, thank you for your generosity. Pray with me, please. Loving God, we acknowledge that all things come from Thee and it's from Thine own that we have given Thee. Saving God, You have gathered us into one baptism, regardless of our backgrounds, cultures, and conditions. Therefore, we praise You with our tithes and offering. May they join with others to become a mighty river, bringing Your peace and Your healing to a very broken world. In the name of the risen one, we pray. Amen. 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 A parting word, we'd like to thank our worship leaders for this Baptism of the Lord Sunday, serving as our liturgists, Elder Zephyr Clay, reading scripture, Brendan Michael, and our music ministry of Church of the Master for the music that you've heard here today. We'd like to thank Anthony Meadows for serving as our video producer. Beloved, take this charge. Go in peace. Knowing that God loves you, Jesus died for you, and the Holy Spirit is always around to support you and to sustain you. And now may the Lord bless and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Amen. 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 Beloved, until we gather again in this virtual space, I am the Reverend Dr. Cecilia A. Taylor, pastor of Church of the Master Presbyterian Church, USA, located in Atlanta, Georgia. We do hope to see you soon.